Okay, in case you missed it, this is the inlet cam. Those are the throttle bodies. Air comes in here. This inlet cam pushes the valve down. Air rushes into the cylinder. It then closes. Piston comes back up. Spark plug fires. That burning fuel air mixture pushes the piston down. This one rotates, opens the valve, pushes it down. Piston comes back up, forcing all the exhaust gas out of the exhaust port. So this is the exhaust cam. As you can see it runs on a sprocket from the inlet cam which is run off a chain from the crankshaft which is down here. So having said that, let's take a look and start measuring some clearances. So we want to measure the di distance between this surface right here and the top of the bucket. Okay, so yeah, cam surface here, valve bucket below it. In case you can't see, which yeah you can't, that's exactly what we have here. At this angle like that, that's where the tunnel is for the chain. This is the inlet bucket. The cam on top pushes down on that bucket. And as you can see, it is really tight. Oh, I can just barely push that down with my two thumbs. It's a really stiff spring. Oh. That is what is required to close that valve when it's spinning really, really fast. That valve has to get closed again in time for the piston to come up. If it doesn't close in time, that's a problem. It's called valve float, where the bucket doesn't stay in contact with the cam profile. That's why we have Desmos, like that thing. So to avoid that valve float caused by these springs not pushing back up hard enough, can we see a spring? Not quite. I'll pull this out with my little valve spring compressor and show you in just a minute. But to avoid that valve float, we have these. Yeah, that's trash. Which are called desmodromic valves. And in here, we have a valve and a rocker that lifts it up and another rocker that pushes it down. So you have one cam profile pushes down on the valve. Let's see if this will work. There we go. So that pulley pushes the valve down, but then the same rocker pulls it back up. So the valve is under 100% control at all times. And that's two valves being pushed down just by my pressure. Two fingers pushes two valves open and then closed. I cannot push that valve with two fingers. As hard as I can, I can barely move that valve because of the spring. The only spring this has is one to just take up the slack. It's a little helper spring in there. So that's, that's one of the rockers that pushes down. That one back there lifts up. That's the difference between Italian, well I should say Ducati, and pretty much everybody else. You can see there's a little spring in there. That's just a helper spring. Just keeps the, the fingers of the rockers tight against the valve collets there. But yeah, I can move both of these valves down and up with the easy, gentle finger pressure on this pulley because there's no valve springs. And you get 100% guaranteed no valve float. Okay, so we need to measure the gap between that surface there and this 
surface here. So let's get to it. So we can use these bent ended ones, which are very handy. I've also got this Sears kit where we have a go-no-go -no -go type of situation happening, which means this thin surface here is four, this surface here is six. It can be very handy. I just did a couple of dirt bikes with this kit. Really cut down the time it took. So let's look up the clearances that they should be. And we will get a notepad, write them down, see where we are at. Okay, we have some numbers. Inlet clearance needs to be between 0.1 and 0.15 millimeters, which is the same as roughly four to six thousandths of an inch. What do we have here? Four to six thousandths of an inch. That is quite handy. Okay, we know what the numbers are. Let's do some checking. So, I will literally just turn the engine until... Oh, see that spring? Pushed that crank. That's why we need to lock the crank in place while we're adjusting. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Up to six thousandths. And you know what? It won't go in. So that means it's less than four. So we already know straight away that one needs to be adjusted. That is an inauspicious beginning. When you're putting these in, they're supposed to feel like you're sliding them between the pages of a book. Not clamped and not wiggly, but a nice smooth gliding motion comes down to feel. Maybe that's why they call them feeler gauges. Now you can see why that kink on the end is helpful. Okay, that one just barely goes through on the four. So it's, the gap's a little bigger than the first one, but not by much. Still, it's a little tight. I would say that is less than four thousandths. So, we want that to be between four and six, not less than four. So that one needs to be a little smaller as well. This one needs to be a little bit smaller. That one needs to be significantly smaller. When I say that, I'm referring to the shim underneath the bucket. So what we've got here is the bucket has a shim underneath there. It sits on top of that. By adjusting the thickness of that shim, thicker, thinner, this moves up and down on the top of the valve. We use that to adjust for the movement of the valve in the cylinder. What we've got to do is pull that out, measure the shim, put one in that's a little bit smaller and that will drop the bucket. This bucket will move down in the engine by the difference between the that shim and the one we put in. So before we do that though of course we will measure them all. Okay, so we don't know exactly what that shim is. We just know that the clearance is less than four, and it should be between four and six. So let's see if we can measure exactly what that distance is. Not with these. That's the smallest is five. Okay, let's see if it's closer. That's a three and a two. Let's see which one is closest. You know what? The three won't go in either. There, the two slides in 
very easily, no resistance at all. So it's the exact gap is between two thousandths and three thousandths. So um, let's say it's zero point zero zero two two thousandths and we'll give it a little bit extra because the feel on two was very spacious but three wouldn't go in at all so it felt like it's more than two thousandths but still that's a lot less than it should be let's try the next one I'm thinking it's going to be closer to three because it was a little closer yeah that's a nice smooth fit so that's just like exactly three thousandths we will then rotate that lobe so it's pointing directly up and I did read once that it's important to not rotate the engine in the opposite direction I don't quite understand why not though if anyone would care to explain that would be much appreciated okay let's this is the four to six go no go and you know what Ooh, four just barely fits in it goes in but it's a little too tight so that's going to be like three point seven five thousandths so let's just double check with a three yeah that's really loose with the three so that's we'll, we'll call that three and a half oh look at that the four slips right through the six does not it stops at the six so it is between four and six so that is good yeah that four slips in so easily the gap is bigger so the gap is probably five because the six won't go through at all wow love that so that one is exactly right it's five doesn't need to be changed okay that's interesting so there's a wide range of clearances from two and a half to five now let's check the exhaust now the clearance for the exhaust is different because they get hotter so they have to be bigger the gap has to be bigger because they get hotter so 0.2 to 0.25 millimeters or between eight and ten thousandths of an inch what do you know eight to ten yeah by the way if anyone wants a couple of scrap RSV4 cylinder heads let me know I don't know if you can see but those buckets got punched out so you can actually feel the impressions from the shims on top of the buckets but yeah whole separate issue as I mentioned okay eight to ten thousandths of an inch on the exhausts it doesn't fit. Eight doesn't go. Eight's too great. So it's less than eight thousandths. There we go. There's a seven. Hmm. Seven is too tight. six nice and smooth that's what we want so we know that's six eight to ten Whoa. Ah. nice and smooth and then locks 
So that second exhaust is exactly between 8 and 10 because the 8 lips in nice and smooth and it doesn't go past the 8. Beautiful. So that is where it should be. So that's 9. rotate the crank there we go what could it be go in but it's a little too tight to be a genuine 8 so I would say that's like 7.5 okay that one's nice and smooth and locks at 10 so yeah, I would call that 9, because that's really loose at the 8, so that's good, that one's fine. We have between 4 and 6, we have one that's between 4 and 6, the others are all too small, we're then supposed to be between 8 and 10. Those two are good. The others are too small. So that cam, both those cams have to come out. But before we do that, we have to position the crank in the correct spot. There's actually a mark on the other side that we use to line it up, lock it into place, because we don't want the springs to push the cams, twisting them, while one of them is out of place. Or these springs in this cylinder head from pushing the crank, which would push these. 